Oh dang, baggy pants, skater shoes, this guy's a pro. Hey man, I like your style. Can you do an ollie? Thanks man. Hell yeah, I can. Check it out. Totally rad, dude. What about a pop shove it? Yeah, cork dog. That, bro, did you just pop this box and then do a shove it and call it a pop shove it? I don't know what you're talking about, man. You Welcome to my video on how to do a pop shove it. Let's first talk about what the difference between a shove it versus a pop shove it is. So, a shove it and a pop shove it are very similar. The main difference is in the name one pops and one doesn't. As you can see, the pop shover requires the tail of the board to make contact with the ground and is generally higher than the shove it. So two tricks you should know before the pop shove it are the shove it and the ollie. Alright, so where should I put my foot when doing a pop shove it? Well, pop shove are a little different than shove it foot positioning. So I put my back foot in the center of the tail as it gives me the most pop. The front foot can go really anywhere. I like to have it just under the bolts to have maximum balance and control. Okay, let's get into the trick, the back foot pop and scoop. So the main difference between the shove it and the pop shove it is in the pop. So the pop requires the tail of the board to make contact with the ground first before scooping back. So the motion that the back foot makes is to pop the tail straight down, then slide the back foot a slight bit back towards you to make the board rotate 180 degrees. So here's a POV of me popping the tail, then scooping the board back towards me, causing the board to rotate backside. So once you pop the tail and your board is rotating, you'll need to catch it and land. This is probably going to be the most difficult part of the trick. So here's a front view of me doing a pop shove it. As you can see, both my feet are above the board when landing the trick. Here's the back side view. As you can see, my feet are again above the board while my knees are tucked after I pop and scoop the tail. After you pop and jump, it's important to keep your weight centered over the board. This will help landing the trick a lot easier when you know the board is right under your feet. If not, you'll risk the chance of slipping out or missing the board completely. So the biggest tip I can give is to jump and tuck your knees higher than the board. It seems very simple, just have your feet above the board, or there's no chance of you landing it if your feet are below the board. Honestly, this could be the toughest part of landing it, but you got this. So after you pop and the board is rotating, when you see your bolts, catch it with your front foot and put your back foot on right after. Okay, let's talk about some common mistakes. The first common mistake is not being able to land on the board with both feet. So this is probably the hardest part, and it has nothing to do with your physical capabilities, but all mental. If you're afraid of landing, it makes the trick a hundred times harder. So what I suggest you do if you're afraid of committing or landing on the board is to hold on to something. Here I got a large recycling bin, but honestly anything works. Just hold on to it so that you're not afraid of falling. The second mistake is that the board flies away from me. I've realized this problem stems from two main reasons. The first is that you're leaning too far back. So keep your body straight and slightly forward. The second is that you may be popping the board slightly in front of you. So this causes the board to shoot forward. So make sure you're pushing straight down. 
the board is going to be slightly in front of you when it is rotating, so jump up and a little forward in order to keep the board under your feet. The last mistake is that the board flips when trying to land on it. I'm honestly not sure if a lot of people have this problem, but I definitely did and it was super frustrating. So this happens when you try to land, but you land on the heel side of your board and causes the board to flip. It took me a while to figure this out, but it was because when I jumped, I was never completely on top of the board. And so when I would try to land, I would have to extend my legs forward a bit just to try and catch it. So this ultimately caused me to hit the heel side of my board and flip it over. So my tip for this is to jump up and a little bit forward to ensure you're on top of the board throughout the entire trick. Aim for your ball of your feet to land on the bolts. Let's talk about the progression and how you can land your first pop shove it. So make sure you have the two prerequisite tricks down on lock. The first being the ollie and the second being a shove it. These two tricks will really help you land your pop shove it. Start with stationary pop shove it and land with just one foot. Then do it moving so you get comfortable with the speed. This is to try and land on it with both feet. If at first you need to hold on to something, that's okay. Next, continue to do it stationary when landing on two feet, but don't hold on to anything. So once you've done that and you're comfortable doing that, you're ready to do it rolling. Congrats, you just landed your first pop shove it. Okay, so I want to talk a little bit about my personal struggles with pop shove -its. Honestly, pop shove -its were pretty difficult for me at first, but they got better once I figured out how to do them properly. So as you can see, these are a bunch of clips from about a year ago of me trying to do pop shove -its. It was not pretty at all. I couldn't land them, but I was committing to them. It wasn't until I really learned that I had to jump up and a little forward to keep on top of the board. Fast forward a year, I can consistently do pop shove now. So if I can do it, you definitely can do it. Thank you for taking your time out of your busy day to watch this video. Keep on practicing and most importantly, never give up. Soup. Or don't.